حي على الفلاح حي على نبينا محمد ولا آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما أجمعين إن شاء الله مي الله سبحانه وتعالى انكريز ان all of us knowledge السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, on behalf of Talimul Islam and on behalf of Institute of the Language of the Quran, we welcome you to this new Arabic course. Inshallah, this course will benefit you a lot. It will enable you to understand Quran 85% directly, Inshallah. And Inshallah, your experience in this class will be most enjoyable and very fruitful. From the outset, I must tell you that I'm not a scholar. I do not have any university degrees. All, ha all, all I have is my experience. I went to various places, various countries, and I met so many teachers who are very kind, and they taught me many things in Arabic which made me understand Quran directly. And inshallah, I'm going to share all these things with you so that you will be able to understand Quran when it is recited. When you pray, you know what you are praying. And uh, when you hear tilawat, inshallah, it will touch your heart because you will understand what's going on. You know. We start with our handbook, brothers and sisters. How many letters of alphabet? Most of us, we were taught that there are 28 but they are 29. Eh? Alif is the letter of alphabet, but it is not consonant. It does not have a speech sound. When you say A, 
It is not Alif, but it is Hamza. And how do you write Hamza? Are you with me? This is Hamza, brother. Then what is this Alif doing here? It is Hamza's chair. Hamza is very delicate. She needs a chair. Okay? So here is Alif is the chair for Hamza. Sometimes Wow will become a chair for Hamza. And sometimes Ya will become a chair for Hamza. So Hamza has different chairs depending on what is in front of her. And sometimes Hamza feels strong and she doesn't need any chair. So there are many rules, spelling rules for writing Hamza. That slowly, slowly we will learn. Hmm? You do not have to worry. Brother. And I must tell you something, that if you do not understand everything today, brothers and sisters, don't worry. <coughs> huh? Because tomorrow when you come to class, inshallah, you will understand better. And third day, your understanding will be very strong. And after one week, you will say to yourself, I knew this all from my childhood. Okay? Inshallah, you'll get stronger and stronger. So, brothers and sisters, we have to remember. Okay? Aleph is used for elongation. Huh? How many... Okay, now in the handout, the next thing is, in English language, there are eight parts of speech. We know that. And they have been given here. Noun... Pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjunction, interjection. Huh? These are the eight parts of speech. How many parts of speech in Arabic? Three. Noun, verb, and particles. Harf. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, how come there are eight in English and three in Arabic. But the noun in Arabic also includes pronoun, adjective, adverb, and interjection. They are all covered in this category of noun. So we have to remember. So in fact, they are same as in English. But we do not <coughs> have eight, but instead of three. Okay. When we say pronoun, it is, there is a word for pronoun in Arabic, which is damir. But it still comes under the category of noun. This is just a general idea, brother. You will, inshallah, uh, as we go along, uh, you will notice that, inshallah. The next thing is, brother, the letters of alphabet... Okay, brother and sister, and as we said, there are 29 letters of alphabet, out of which 28 are consonants, and uh, alif has no speech sound. When you say a, uh, it is the sound of hamza. Huh? Now, how many vowel signs, brother, in Arabic language? Only three. Dhamma, Fata, and Kasra. Are you with me, brother? Dhamma, Fata, and Kasra. Now remember, these are short vowels. Huh? Okay, they are short vowels. So if I say to you, if I write like this, what will you say? Bu, short, bu. Huh? If I write like this, what will you say? Ba, short vowel. Huh? And if I say this, then it is? B. Short. Huh? Now, in order uh, to do uh, elongation, I put here alif. Now, you see, the job of alif is to elongate. Now, this is ba. Huh? And then I put wow here, and it is boo. And if I put ya here, it is b. Are you with me? Now, there are 
there are uh, three vowel signs. Hmm? Dhamma, Fata, and Kasra only. And there is a fourth thing we must understand, and it is called Sukun. Huh? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? There are many ways of writing Sukun. Sometimes it is like a tiny circle. Sometimes they write like this. Huh? But I prefer tiny circle because it's, it's better uh, when you are, uh, want to understand properly. Okay. Now, Sukun is not a vowel sign. Huh? Sukun is not a vowel sign. What is Sukun then? Sukun tells me that there is no vowel sign on the Arabic letter. Are you with me, brother? Okay. Where is the vowel sign here? On ba. What is on vow? It is Sukun. Why? There is no vowel sign. There is no vowel sign. Okay. No, no, this you never write. Huh? You never write. But you understand. If I say ba, where is the vowel sign? Ba. On the ba. What is on alif? There is a sukun. We don't write it. But there is a sukun. We don't write it. Huh? And what about b? Where is the vowel sign? On the B. What is on the Ya? A Sukun, because there is no vowel sign. Now these things are to be remembered. And even if, if you forget, don't worry, because I will be repeating these things often. You know, some of you will, when we go a little bit deeper in the course, all these things will come to you. Huh? Okay? So you don't write it. Huh? You don't write it, but it is there. Okay. I give you another example, brother. What is this, brother? Taba. What is it? Taba. Okay. And what is this? Tuba. Are you with me? Now I write down like this. What is this? Tab. There is no vowel sign on. Ba, tab. See how you pronounce ba, tab. Okay. Now, if I say like this, what is now, brothers and sisters? Tub, tub. Here it was tuba, and here it is tub. So there is a sukun on ba. If I write like this, brother. Tubta. Huh? So we did not pronounce ba in its normal way as we pronounce ta and this ta. Tubta. Huh? And if I put dhamma here, tubtu. If I put kasra here, tubti. So ba has a sukun. It means it has no vowel sign. It has no vowel sign. Huh? Sukun means there is no vowel sign on the letter. Is it clear, inshallah? Try and remember this, brothers. Okay, now we come to the other part of uh, uh, the handout, brothers and sisters. The noun is either definite or indefinite. Sahih, brothers and sisters? Either it is definite or indefinite. What do we do in English when it is indefinite now? How do we, do, how do we describe it, brother? Ah, by using a or an. Are you with me? This, when it comes in front of a noun, Makes it indefinite. Huh? How do you define it? Make it definite? The. Okay, brother. Now, 
in order to define an indefinite noun in Arabic, we do not have anything similar to this. But at the end of the noun, we put double vowel sign. Are you with me? We put double vowel sign. If, it is, if the noun ends with a dhamma, then we put two dhammas. If the noun ends with a fata, then we'll put two fatas. Huh? If the noun ends with a kasra, we put two kasras. This is called tanuin. What is it called? Tanuin. Tanuin. Huh? tanuin. Tanuin tells us that the noun is indefinite. Are you with me? Tanuin will tell us that the noun is indefinite. If I say Kitabun, what is the English? A book. A book. A book. If I say Kalamun, If I say Baitun, a house. Sahih, brothers and sisters? And then, how do I make it definite? Huh? So, definite, which is the in English, we have to add al to the al to the noun. Huh? So I want to say the book. What will I do now? Al kita bu. I cannot have tanwi. Al kita bu. Al kita bu. The book. Okay, brothers and sisters? Now you see, as soon as I put Al, like a magic, one vowel sign got dropped. Huh? Instead of Bun, it became Bu. Got the idea? Now, if I say Kalamun, a pen, I want to say the pen. What will I do? Al. Kalamu. Huh? But these are the basics. I know most of you already know. But I'm starting from the very beginning. In case there's a one student who's coming for the first time to learn Arabic. So that he gets some idea, inshallah. Huh? Al Kalamu. Got the idea? If I write down Al Kalamun, that is wrong. Because Tanween and Al cannot coexist. One has to come and other has to go. Huh? So, if you say Al, then only one Dhamma. And then here comes Al Baitu. Okay, instead of Baitun, it became Al Baitu, means the house. And I should write here the pen. Okay. Is it clear, brothers and sisters? Yes. Okay. Now, we come to something which is always sometimes confusing to the students. But I will explain you. And I'll keep on explaining you in every session. Whenever I get an opportunity, I'll be asking you questions and also repeating my, uh, you know, point so that if you have missed it out, you will inshallah remember. But uh, I said, Baitun, it is indefinite. How about if I write down Muhammadun?
There is a tanvi in there which always tells me that the noun is indefinite. But what about Muhammadun? Is it definite or indefinite? It is definite. Brother, how come? Tanvi means indefinite. And now you say Muhammad is definite. Yes, you are right. Why? Because Muhammad is a proper noun. All proper nouns are definite. When you say Muhammad, it doesn't mean any Muhammad. It means one particular Muhammad. Hmm? If I say Ali, eh, brother, how do you write Ali? We always say Ali, but truly speaking, Ali Yun, brother. See Tanwin? No, Tanwin is normally the sign of uh, a, a noun which is indefinite. But in the case of proper nouns, eh, the Tanwin doesn't make any difference. It means the noun is definite. Huh? The noun is definite. You will remember this, huh? please. Okay? And I will be repeating it again and again, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, now I come to a very important rule in Arabic, you know, and inshallah I will try to explain you in a nice way, brothers and sisters. The beauty of Dr. Abdurrahim's book, brother and sister, as I said, I, will, I admire it and I always mention it. And soon you will also feel the way I feel it, you know. Every lesson is designed in a way to teach us something. In other Arabic books, brother, things are all put together like a khichra, you know, and, and it, it is very difficult. On the first or second or third page of any other Arabic book, you will have verbs coming in present tense and past tense, uh, brother. And uh, long verbs, you know. So everything is brought together. And it is extremely confusing. It's not confu confusing to the person who already knows Arabic. But it is confusing for us. Okay. So what Dr. Abdurrahim has done, that in his first book, his emphasis is on only noun. We are learning nouns in the first book. There are only four verbs one, two, three, four. Four verbs mentioned in book one. Okay. Then when we go in book two, brother, and then the verbs will come. And Dr. Abdurrahim's method is this, that he teaches you one thing properly. Okay. But then when the verbs will come, they will come in wholesale. You'll have verbs coming from everywhere. You know. But by that time, we'll be prepared. But my... You know, uh, method is, and I found it very uh, rewarding, producing good results, that we will do some verbs on our own, which are not mentioned in the book. So that when we come to book two, you have a good understanding of verbs. So when they come in front of you, you will say, I know it. You know, you will feel comfortable. So first book is concentrating on nouns. Huh? Okay, and each lesson is like a brick. We make one brick. So we study one lesson, we put a brick. We study second lesson, we put a second brick. And slowly, slowly we'll build our house. You know, brick by brick, lesson by lesson. Each lesson will show you something. Now we come to the page three of handouts. All these things are also mentioned in the key. But I have tried to, you know, do little differently, brothers. So you must always read the key also. It will help you. Now, in Arabic, the nouns decline. Huh? Declension of noun. In Arabic, nouns decline. You already know it. But you have never realized it. Why? You have never Real, realize this why now I will give you examples huh, brother 
I am writing something. You already know it. Muhammadun Rasulullah. What is the English, brother? Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Very good, brother. Then I say to you, We say every day in our salah. What do we say? Ashadu Anna Muhammadan. But why Muhammadan? Before you wrote Muhammadun, now you are writing Muhammadan. Okay. What will be the English? I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave brother and his messenger. Huh? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now, every day we say many, many times, Allahumma. What is the meaning of Allahumma? Ya Allah. What is the meaning of Allahumma? Ya Allah. Allahumma salli. We say every day. Allahumma salli. Allah Muhammadin. Hmm? Oh Allah, uh, send your blessings on Muhammad. Are you with me, brother? Huh? Ya Allah. Send your blessings on Muhammad. Are you with me, brother and sisters? Do you see any change in English? Where we wrote down Muhammad, we did not change anything in English. Well, what about in Arabic, brother? What's going on here? Sometimes you are saying dun, sometimes you are saying dan, sometimes you are saying din. What's going on? This is what we are going to learn uh, and understand. What is the rule, brothers and sisters? That Arabic nouns decline. They have three different endings. Huh? They can end with a tanween dhamma or with one dhamma if there is an al there. It can decline to tanween fata or if you have al then it is one fata. Or it can decline to tanween kasra. Or with alif and lam, with al, one kasra. Okay, brothers and sisters. So what is this, brother? Only the ending. Dun. What is it? Dun. And what is this? Dan. And what is this? Din. Say it again loudly. Dun. Dan. Then, these are the three declensions. Huh? Okay? Every Arabic noun will decline. Sometimes you will see it 
and sometimes you won't see it, but we are going to learn everything. In the initial stage, we will see the vowel signs in the books, but later on, we may not. I give you one more example, brother. Now I'm going to remove this. Huh? And why it happens, brothers and sisters? This is what we are going to learn. And this is what you will be watching in the Quran. You will be looking. When you are reading, you will notice this. You will observe this, brother. And then it will tell us this last vowel sign in the noun will tell you the function of that noun in a sentence. What is that noun doing in a sentence? Is it coming as a subject? Is it coming as a subject of a verb? Is it coming as an object? Is it coming after a preposition? It will tell you. In its natural course, in its, in its natural form, all the nouns are always end with a dhamma. All the time. They change when something happens in the sentence. When they perform a different function in the sentence, then they change. Brother. Give you one more example. You know all these things, but you never knew why. And this course is going to teach you. Brothers and sisters, okay. I will write down here. What did I write down, brother? Allahu. Is it definite or indefinite? It is definite because Al is there. No tanween. Because Al is there, no tanween. What do you see at the end? Dhamma. Dhamma, you see, okay? Allahu Gafurun Rahimun. Sahi? Okay? See, Gafurun, indefinite. Rahimun, okay? Fine. Then I write here, uh, I write here, Inna Allah, why brother? I put Allahu there, now I am putting ha, Allah, ha. something is happening in the sentence. Okay? Inna Allah, Gafurun, Rahimun. Got the idea, brothers and sisters? Inna Allah Gafurun Rahimun. Correct? Now, what is at the end of Allah? Fatah. Huh? Why it is single? Because it is definite. Huh? Sahih? Now we say. Awuzu. What did I write down? Auzu. Hey, hey, come on. Give me a break, brother. What's going on here? Sometimes you are saying Allahu. Sometimes you are saying Allah. And now, some, now you are saying Allahi. What's going on? But as we know, the nouns decline in Arabic language. And we are going to learn about that. Are you with me? We are going to learn about that. Okay? And let's learn the terminology now. Huh? The, the terms. Huh? If the noun, brothers and sisters, look at carefully. If the noun ends with a dhamma, be it a tanwin or one, it should end with a dhamma. Huh? Be it a tanwin or a single dhamma. It is called marfu. What is it called, brother? This you will have to memorize. Marfu. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? If the noun ends with a dhamma, you will call it marfu. You will say the noun is marfu. Okay? What do you call it in English? You will call that it is a nominative case. Brother, 
if you are comfortable, we will use some English terms. But later on, you will be most comfortable with Arabic terms. Huh? Marfu is nominative case. Okay. Now, if the noun ends with a fatah, be it a tanween, or be it a one single fatah at the end of a noun, then we say it is mansoor. What is it, brother? It is mansoor. What do we call it in English? Either you call it objective case or accusative case. It's, it's mentioned there. Huh? Obje objective case or accusative case. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Huh? But, but we will memorize these terms that I'm writing. Huh? Now, if the noun ends with a kasra, be it a tanween or one, we will say the noun is majroor. Not majboor, huh? majroor. <laughs> okay? Majroor, majroorun. Are you with me? And in English, it is called Genitive case. Huh? I think it is I, genitive case. Yes, the genitive case. Huh? And accusative case, maybe I should write on accusative case also. Mansu is accusative case. Okay, brothers and sisters? So, today, you know, you must memorize Marfu, Mansu, and Majroor. We will repeat it every day. And brothers and sisters, this thing will stay with you all the time when you are reading Quran. It is in the back of your mind that the nouns can be Marfu, According to the function it performs, it can be mansu or it can be majru. As you can see, we say Allahu Ghafurur Rahim. We said Allahu. As soon as I put inna in front of it, I said inna Allah. We are going to learn what is inna in book two. The first lesson in book two deals with inna. Inna Allah. Okay. And then as soon as Something came, Billahi, which is a preposition, it changed the noun into a majroor. Change it into majroor. Are you, this is what we are going to learn, and you, this you'll observe. Huh? This is the very, very important. Huh? Okay. Now, <clears throat> I made a little song, you know, out of this. When I say dun. It's marfu. When I say dan, it's mansub. When I say din, it's majroor. When I say dun, it's marfu. When I say dan, it's mansub. When I say din. It's majroor, therefore, dun dun dan dan din din, 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 dun dun dan dan din din. One more time. When I say dun, it's marfu. When I say dan, it's mansub. When I say din, it's majroor. Therefore, dun dun dan dan din din, dun dun dan dan din din, dun dun dan dan din din. Dun 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 din din.
it, brother? Jazakallah. Okay. So we will remember this, sir. And this will help you. Okay? Okay. And you must always remember. What will you remember, brother? Pronounce this. Last one. Don. What is this? Dan. And what is the next one? Then. In short, don, dan, din. What is it? Don, dan, din. <laughs> that is the way the nouns decline in Arabic. Don, dan, din. Okay? Now I, I compose another song, but I have to, because I'm not a musician, but sometimes I get that inspiration and I do it, you know. I, maybe later on I will, inshallah. To refresh you, again I will do it, inshallah. Are you with me, brothers? And sisters, so three pages from the uh, handout. Huh? Now we go to the main book, brother. We go to the main book. Adarso Awal. Okay. Haza. What is sister? The blue book. Yeah? Blue book. Lesson one. What is the title? What is the title? Haza. We are learning Haza. What is Haza, brother? Most of you know the meaning. What is it? This. this. Huh? Haza means this. Okay, but write down near there in your book. Huh? Just write down, brother. What is Haza? It is... What is it, brother? Ah, this is a pronoun. And pronoun is a noun. In Arabic, pronoun is also a noun. Okay, so it's a pronoun. Just remember it, brother. And if you forget, says Fatima, if you forget, it's normal. You should not be too concerned. Because we will be repeating it so many times in the class that it's going to come out of your both ears. Okay? So it is demonstrative noun. What do you call it in Arabic? Ismu ishara. Huh? Those who are familiar with Urdu, they will find the course very easy. Huh? Huh? Brother? Ismul Ismul ishara. Huh? We will be doing, repeating it. Right now I am, you know, throwing these things at you. But please do not be gavarified because we'll be repeating them and it will inshallah become part of your vocabulary and part of your memory inshallah. Huh? Haza. Are you with me brother? What is haza? It is a demonstrative pronoun which means it's a noun. Are you with me? Okay. And then uh, uh, in, in Arabic we call it ismu shara. We call it Ismu ishara. Okay? Ishara. Now, these are the sentences, simple sentences we are studying. I am not going to go in detail, but very soon we will go in detail. Because ours is an intensive course. We will be moving at a steady pace, brother. Huh? Now, as, as you know, you are all supposed to read. Huh? You must know how to read. And you will be writing all these things in your book. And the more you read and write, you will become stronger. Brother. And, and in the class, if you, you are a team of husband and wife, it's a great thing because you can go home and read to each other and, and discuss with each other and it will help. Every day, you, brother, you've got to do your homework. Huh? Uh, this is ju just like coming to a college or a university program where you go in the morning to the university, go home and study, come back and learn more. So our course is like that. Huh? If you will work hard, you will succeed. Uh, if you won't, then uh, it will be a problem. Okay. What is the first? Haza uh, baitun. What is it? Haza baitun. Now, normally, when you speak, you do not say baitun. You say haza bait. Just like in Quran, when you stop, you give a sukun. Huh? 
But for our course, we will repeat. Don't then, then we will repeat. Because we want to understand properly. But those who speak Arabic fluently, just like us, we speak English fluently. But do we know the grammar? We don't know the grammar. If somebody asks you, teach me English, you cannot teach English, brother. Because you don't know yourself properly. You only speak, you cannot teach. Same way, the people who speak Arabic, when they say, Hada Bait, or when they say, Muhammad Talib, or Raitu Muhammad, or Marartu Bi Muhammad, they are not very sure about the endings. Because that's the way you stop it. You don't put the, uh, you know, pronounce the last. But here in our class, we will pronounce everything. Huh? So that we get a good idea of what's going on in the sentence. So you will always be reading, Hada Baitun. Hada Baitun. Now tell me, brother and sister, what is the translation? This is a house. Huh? Indefinite. Huh? Indefinite. This is a house. Okay. Now, I think you have understood this, so I am going to uh, erase it. Huh, brother? Haza. Huh? See, it is pronounced like Haza. Huh? But it, this alif is not written. Huh? It is explained in the key also. So it is Haza. Huh? Okay, Haza means this, and Baitun means a house. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? No, but you said in English that this is a house. Okay, I see this here, Haza. I see a house here, Baitun. But I don't think, I don't see anything similar to is in Arabic. Are you with me when I explain, huh, Brother Muhammad? Uh, you say this, which is equal to Haza. And you say a house, Baitun. What about is? So what is is? Okay, we go to English grammar. Huh? Is, are, and am, these are linking verbs. In English, we call it copula. Huh? Copula verbs. Huh, brothers and sisters? They are intransitive verbs, but I will not go in detail in intransitive. But they are called copula verbs. It means they are linking verbs. They link one noun with another noun. Okay? Or it links the subject with the other noun. Okay? They are called linking word in English. They do not exist in Arabic language. They are not there. Huh? There is no need. Okay? When you say, Haza Kalamun, we only said two words. This, a pen, but you will translate, this is a pen. But in Arabic, what will you say? Haza Kalamun. You will say, Haza Kitabun. Huh? There is no is or M, or R in Arabic. So you have to keep that in mind. Huh? And what are they called in, is R, M are called in, in English grammar? Copula verbs. Huh? Yes. Brother. 